Shavi. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much if you've watched our first video in this series of videos that we're talking about Melody Festival in Sugar Sugar Eps. Hopefully I pronounced that right or did that right. But if you have not seen it already then I'm going to try and put a little annotation right here. I'll just put it in the description. But we're back again because SVT have announced nine more artists for Melody Festival in 2021. And I'm not gonna beat around a bush, let's just get on with it. But they surprised us this morning, but by obviously giving us what we all want. Doctor is returning for a second year in a row. And this time she will be singing the song Little Tots. Obviously, Dr. co wrote uh, this song, and she co-wrote it, obviously, with her fiancé, Dino Medizonic. Um, She's saying that Little Tot is a modern lullaby, keeping your ego in check and putting your phone down once in a while. Um, I'm guessing we're going to get something different out of her. Just looking at that description, I mean, we know that on her first go, she did cry which is like kind of like a mid-tempo more slower than bulletproof obviously so i'm guessing now that she's got more experience i think it will work well on her now that she's established herself a bit more uh maria what are your thoughts on this one well finally someone i really know i really remember <laughs> yes <laughs> even i know bulletproof uh and i really enjoyed the song uh, this time, I think uh, it's going to be something a little bit different, but emotional and powerful enough. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> How about you, Lisa? I, I'm I'm very excited to see to see Dotter back. I I was there last year when she came runner up in what was the tightest uh, margin between the top two since 2014. And if she can do that again, then who knows? Who knows? She could she could go one one better this time. And she's in a safety zone. It's her it's her own composition. She's with her fiance. They know what works for her. And it feels like we're gonna get something maybe a little bit different because nobody wants to try and repeat the same trick twice. And it's gonna probably have completely different staging and it'll be something that's that suits her and it, from the sounds of it it seems reflective of sort of what's happening now and maybe trying to not be on social media and things and looking at the news all, all the time and um she has that sort of it'll be probably similar to what she usually does indie electro maybe a bit quirky so yeah who knows we, we could be in for a really a really good another good entry from Dotter again dominic your thoughts I'm very excited about that. Um, Dot has always liked delivering art. With her first NG Cry in 2017, I was I was shocked when this didn't go through. But it was art. It was um, the whole performance was it was art. She's like an artist yeah. and is embracing it. And also like this year um, with Bulletproof, the performance was an experience. It, it was simple, but there was still like a lot happening, and the viewers were entertained. And I think um, she's also like delivering this for next year. Um, I don't know how, what kind of song I'm expecting, but also like slow, slower. Um, Willowproof wasn't really up tempo, but I think a bit slower than that. And um, I mean, Johanna and Dino, they're perfect partners together and they write amazing songs. Um, I'm very excited for that. And I can't wait to hear it. I think after this year, she's probably already one of the favorites based on her name i think this year really helps her getting like very known and establish her brand with the swedish public well we are we all know that er everyone loves daughter and everyone got a real surprise waking up at like 6 or 7 a.m which was worth the wait <laughs> okay then moving on we've got our second artist which is which dominic will introduce yes um, the second artist is also a uh, returnee. It's Lisa. I think last time she went with her full name, Elisa Lindström. Um, her song is called Den du Erde. 
and the songwriters are Bobby Lundgren, Ingela Pling Forstmann, and Elisa Lindstrom herself. And she describes it as a timeless ballad about daring to be exactly who you are and who you want to be. And she revealed that she cried when she, when she heard it the first time. Um, I don't want to cry when I watch Malfest, but maybe I will. But out of having this the first time when it's starting and then maybe again when she performs a song, um, I think last time it was a Schlager song. Was it Schlager? Casanova? Yeah, it was a more off-tempo Yes. By looking at it, because I did listen to it this morning. Lisa, what? Yeah, it was a it was a schlager bot, oh, yeah. and it was robbed. Yes, <laughs> it was very catchy, and um, now getting a ballad from her, I'm excited to see that. Um, her vocals and how she's presenting the ballad. We had um, several artists who went from ballads to up tempo and other way. For example, Ellen Benedictson was first in with a ballad, and then came with a mid tempo song, and. Um, this time I'm expecting, I was expecting also the Schlager again, but I think um, the ballad will also suit her fine. And I'm excited to see what she's coming up with. Um, Lisa, what do you think? Um, well, it, it always pains me a little bit when Schlager dies and we have to have a ballad instead. I know we have to have a little bit of everything, but I, I, I am extremely partial to my Schlager bops. And she has pedigree in that. She has her own dance band that she's been fronting for years. And she even won, she won the Let's Dance a, a few years ago, the Swedish version of Strictly Come Dancing. So she has stagecraft, but we're gonna get a ballad. But I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt because I did, I did really enjoy Casanova and I wanted that to, to get through back in the day, so. Who, who, who knows? Maybe it could be something like an uplifting ballad and it will have a key change or, or, or something to give it some month at the end. Who knows with that? I guess a key change. Oh, these are amazing, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maria, what do you think? Uh, well, I've heard of uh, Casanova before, but I never knew it was her, actually. It, it was Malfest. But uh, still, I'm really happy to know this now. <laughs> Uh, and um, when I found out it's going to be a ballad, I am actually quite confused about this because uh, I uh, can't, I, I can't uh, know what to expect, if I can say so. It's like I uh, liked uh, Casanova a lot, but I can't imagine her singing a ballad. I don't know why, <laughs> it's just, uh, just not happening for me. Uh, but I'm really excited to see what she's going to perform. I mean, it's always exciting when you see artists going to another genre and like totally invent themselves new. Um, yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Um, Tim, what do you think? I, for me, I really like Casanova. And, you know, to find out that we're going to get a ballad, I'm always mixed, but like Lisa said, it is important to have a mixture of track, a mixture of genres in the competition. So maybe after being away in what, like what, five, six, seven years since she last participated, um, I think that you've grown so much in an, as an artist, you'd know yourself a bit more. And I think that's part of the reason why you know, you get so many changes of, like, songs from artists that participate. You know, if you keep trying, you don't want to do the same thing. That's why you try, you know, okay, here, I tried this one this year, didn't work, didn't even qualify. So let me see if I can get through a bit better. Maybe, you know, if she gets through to maybe, like, what, Under the Hansen, I think that's a win. You know, if to go from fifth to like, oh, okay, I made it now. So it does make a, it does make a difference, even if it's just that one slight step, because you still get more exposure. I mean, the important thing is probably to identify with the song, and if she's like connected with the song and like living it, I think everything is possible. Mm -hmm. And Tim has our third artist. <laughs> yeah, um, third artist looks like a newcomer. Uh, we have Lilla Sister with the song Pretender. Um, I've had a look. They are a Swedish 
it's another rock band. So they describe that it's a song like a real hard rock. That was their actual words when they were asked to describe it. And for me, I've seen what they've had. It's kind of edgy. And also, what else did I say? They've done a version of Rihanna's Umbrella, which I kind of to liking. Which is, which is, you know, I've never heard Umbrella sung that way. And they're predominantly in Swedish, but they've released their new, they've released English music in the beginning. So I'm guessing it's just a foray to try and push themselves internationally, which, you know, which is what the purpose of the contest is anyways, try and get your music out there. So who knows? It's a, it's a fresh blood. It's fresh blood. It's fresh music so it's good for me what's your thought on it uh lisa i feel like we're, we're definitely gonna remember these for sure because they, they 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 have a pedigree in yes it's rock but and it's as hard as you can imagine but they blended the genres in with that it's not just like the straight sort of a to b a, a to b plodding rock that uh, makes me feel like my ears are being tortured. They're actually giving something a bit a bit new and inventive and, and creative and, and fun with it. And plus, they've got the Dolly Style writer there. So I feel like it's going to be, remember how you had Minus One for Cyprus a few years ago and they were seen as like the hard rock at, at entry. But then you've got Jason there being that little sort of pulling it back a bit to be a bit more sort of accessible. I feel like that could be what the Dolly Star writer is doing here, like trying not to scare people too much with this one. But it should be, it should be a fun watch and some memorable, memorable staging for sure. Uh, Maria, your thoughts? Uh, well, um, as far as I understood, I can't say they are like hard rock. It's just like my impression. It's more like an alternative, which I really love, love to listen. And um, who knows? Uh, well, this is right. They should be really memorable with, with some staging. I'm sure they provide a really unforgettable one. Um, but I still think that uh, real hard rock it's not gonna be that real hard. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just like uh, some feeling. But I still want to hear this because I love such genre. Um, your thoughts on it, Dominic? Um, my first thought was another rock band. <laughs> like we had one instantly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Like, you know, previously we get like another, another bop or another upbeat tempo or another ballad <laughs> in HP, you won't notice too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, yeah at, again at the time of recording we don't know where they're being put so we won't uh, find that out till god knows when <laughs> no, i think i'm fine um um i like i said in the first part of you when it's like rock but with catchy vibes i'm i'm in it i'm totally fine <laughs> and uh, when i saw the picture i was like they look great as a band they're like their own characters and I don't know I already can see them on stage and I think I kind of enjoy how they perform and I hope also what they the song is going to be like um I think this sometimes you see rock bands and you see that someone is like the leading person and the rest is kind of in the back but I think with these four I think everybody says like their own special um I don't know local personality even based on the picture and um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they are coming up with. Um, I'm fine with rock. I'm a bit skeptical, but um, I'm, <laughs> I can't course, wait to. Of course, of course. I can't wait to be amazed. And maybe they end up being my favorites. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Uh, just before we move on, uh, Pretender is written by Isaac Holland, Jacob Retzer, Martin Westrand, Ian Paolo Lira, and Paolo Hamelan. And of course, we're now going to move on to the next artist. Don't yes. Um, when I saw her, her picture, I was like already very excited and um, um, curious to see what she's come up with. Sometimes you see people and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Um, the artist I'm talking about is Frida Krein and um, the song is called The Silence. Um, she describes it as a grandiose, energetic number that she promises will hit you and make you feel it. Um, 
I watched some of her videos on YouTube and she has a voice, she has a personality. Um, I'm very excited to see what she's coming up with and the songwriters are also very promising. We have um, Anna Bergendahl coming back as a songwriter um, together with Bobby Lindgren, David Lindgren, Zacharias and Joy Depp. And I mean, these are well-known artists and songwriters. Um, yeah, with Frida, we don't really know her in the Memphis um, circus, but she's well-known and established artist already. And I can't wait to see what she's come up with. She's looking interesting. And I think um, she's one we should take a look at and don't forget about. Um, Lisa, what do you think? Uh, this this could be a, a, an exciting one just from the writers and what she said about it i feel like we're, we're getting a party I, I i've got this this uh, idea in my head that we're gonna get something like Hera Bjork style and just be a fun a fun party bop and um and um yeah i mean the, the title kind of gives it away the the energy and and that's what she's coming with but she's also not just bringing the energy she's bringing a voice too because she's got pedigree in, in swedish talent shows she's been on got talent a couple of years ago and she was on this year's season of uh, swedish I idol so she's already got an immediate fan base that will be ready to vote for her come come when melfest comes around in, in february so yeah, she'll be one to watch out for definitely when yes. it comes to the voting. Um, Maria, what do you think? Uh, well, I think she will come up with something like a powerful ballad, but she seems really promising. Uh, she, I heard her cover and uh, it's really beautiful and somehow unique, if I can say so. So I think uh, this is going to be really interesting to watch. I'm really excited to hear what she's, she, what she have for, uh, what she, uh, what she has for us. Um, Tim, um, promising, promising by the fact that Anna Bergendahl, Bobby Lundgren, and obviously half of the devs is on the track, so we'll know that it's going to be a quality track. Two, as Lisa said, she's been in Talang, which is the Swedish edition of um, Got Talent and Idol. And so she brings with her experience in competition. So this will be a different competition, but, you know, it's like, you know, same stage, different venue. So, you know, I'm pretty sure she would have been trained enough. So when it comes to performing in these types of competitions, I think she'll be fine. And by the looks of it, and what I've seen from her performance, and she's a very versatile vocalist. So it's just the case of hearing it now and hearing it live, obviously. I mean, we still get like 10 other artists tomorrow, but I think from the newcomers, this is one that's like sticking out somehow. I don't know mm -hmm. from the looks or from the expectation, but um, yeah. I have high hopes here. Um, next artist is also returning, right? Yes, it is. Oh, we've been praying for this for so long. She last competed in 2017. Obviously, uh, unfortunately, she didn't quite make it out of her semi. And a former Eurovision winner, Alok Pirelli, with Still Young. And on her track, she's got some interesting songwriters as well. Thomas Gesson, Bobby Lundgren, Edek Bernholm, and Charlie Gustavsson. And by the looks of it, we're going to get the up-tempo schlager we have been begging from her for quite some time. And it's 2020, and I think this is something we'll need. And we know how much of a performer Charlotte is. So I wouldn't be surprised if she blew, blows us away come February or March. Uh, Maria, what are your thoughts? Well, yes, of course I know her. It's like really, really famous even for me. Uh, and um, I'm actually uh, happy she's coming with uh, up-tempo slugger or something like this. 
it's like uh, Queen never goes out of style. So I'm expecting a banger actually, and I would love to hear this. Dominic, your thoughts? Um, yeah, when she was announced, I think whole Twitter went crazy and I loved it. Um, everybody was like, oh, we want Schlager back. And I love her doing Schlager. Like, Hero was amazing. Um, the girl was amazing. Robbed, amazing. Um, and also, a 2017 song was amazing. Um, I just went when I was at work and um, oh. I saw, um, I, of course, I remember her up tempo songs, but I was like, oh, I'm just going back to 2017, check out her song again, because I haven't been listening to it for a while. And it was so good. I don't know what happened there, but she can perform up tempo songs, she can perform ballads. Um, she's a very amazing person artist and yeah i'm very excited to see what she's coming up with I, I don't think she's someone you can count out of anything she's probably there to be there in the final and get some good places she with an up-tempo song she can reach many audience uh, many audiences and age groups and um she's a professional and she knows what she's doing and i'm excited to see what the song is going to be like yeah, I think everyone is. And now I'm going to move on to Lisa because I think she's very excited about this one as well. Yes, stop. Stop the competition now. We, we, have, <laughs> we have the winner. Unless, unless they go all out tomorrow and give me Ace Wilder or something. No. Oh, I, I have no, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> He's just planting the seeds now. <laughs> that, well, that's what we have to do to, to get what we want in these, in these things. Just... just Give them the nudge, nudge. I, I, let's have Ace Wilder. But for now, for now, I can just revel in enjoyment at having at having Charlotte back, who is just the epitome of everything you think about when you think of Swedish Schlager. And looking at the songwriters, well, it's pretty much the same team that gave us Kingdom Come. So there we go, really. She's uh, already going to hit the ground running, it seems. And of course, every morning when we wake up, we all still imagine that we are still young <laughs> as we get older <laughs> and I do hope that Charlotte decided to take that guitar and give it a special sacrificial burning ceremony because my god we don't want that back again <laughs> it was beautiful I liked it like the like the heartbreak in me when I watched it it's like nope you came seventh it's so sad. What I'm hoping for is, remember the Interval Act a few years ago, when uh, 2016, when she covered Helene Fisher's ultimate Schlagerbanger? I want young. that. I wanted to come with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And then I can die happy. Yeah, hopefully so. Okay, um, moving on. We've got a newcomer, but he's actually been in the Malfest circuit for a while and let Dominic explain. Yes, he's well known. Um, the song is called Tears Run Dry and the artist is Patrick Jean. Jean? I hope I don't bother that. Uh, <laughs> oh, I say it the right way. But the songwriters are also like not easy to pronounce. Um, they are Herman Gudarfi, Patrick Jean himself, and Melanie Weebke. Weebke? Weebke? <laughs> I butchered the end of that. You know who you are if you're watching that. And um, the song is um, described as a sad banger. Um, you don't know if you want to cry or dance, which is very conflicting for me because I don't know if I... I don't want to dance and cry. And then we have another song earlier I wanted probably to cry. And mm -hmm. I just dance and cry the whole time. I watch Melvis probably. Um, I checked him out on YouTube earlier and his, um, he just released an EP. And the, the songs are amazing. I think we can also expect something very good from here, also from the songwriting team. If I'm not mistaken, it's the same songwriting team for the Mamas. Yep. Good move. Um, yeah. So I'm like excited. I'm all in for that. And yeah, it's hard to, what to describe if we don't know the song, but with his previous, previous projects and with the songwriting team, I would like the song. This will be good. Um, Maria, what do you think? Well, I'm confused as well how to combine crying and dancing, actually. But uh, we'll find I, out soon. When your fave doesn't qualify. 
<laughs> so uh, I just hope she gets uh, something uh, similar to his consequences song, which is really good. It's, um, as I understand, well, I just listened to it and, and I really liked it. And I wouldn't mind at all if this sad and sad banger <laughs> would be like this. But actually, I'm really interested how to combine this. So yeah, I just, just so excited. I'm kind of excited for this. Now, when we just talked about it, I was like, "Do we have an example for another sad banger?" I was thinking about "No Tears Left to Cry" by Ariana Grande as a sad banger. <laughs> I don't know, it's a sad banger. I've got one. Um, Duncan Lawrence. Which one? Oh. Feel something. Oh yes. Oh. So it's okay. sad, but sad, but it's like heartbreak, but like edgy and upbeat. Here, yeah. We have set bangers already. Well, yeah. I'm excited. Um, Tim, what do you think? Um, like, I mean, he he's a credible songwriter. If he can do something like the mom, like if he can do something like he did with the mamas last year, you know, even though they're already rumored to come back this year, so I'm like, mm, which is if, if if that does come true, I will be a bit frustrated because. I know Patrick John would give us something real good. And I like sad, I'm going to be the sadder here. I like sad bangers, unfortunately. And, you know, this is the, let's just say he's got his um, target audience just, at, just right there. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, this goes did X, no questions asked. But, you know, from what it is, it's going to be, up tempo, it's gonna be current. So even though the lyrics are a bit, <laughs> but you're still gonna dance to it anyways. You dance to it, but you're hurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Lisa, something you... I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Lisa, what do you think? Lisa, uh, th this is this is this is where I'm about to get evicted from the stream because <laughs> anyone that knows me knows that sad whiny man entries make me bring out the the crucifix and, and the garlic to protect myself <laughs> but i'm willing i'm willing to give patrick every opportunity to win me around because well he's already he's already written a, a melfest winning entry and I, I love i love move that was up there as as my favorite last year so well technically this year um so yeah, I, 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 I'm willing to give him a chance on, on that front because, and I do feel like he's probably going to give us more sort of a Felix Salmon type of vibe, just from the whole like sad dancing maybe. And it's still going to be modern and, 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 and fresh in its own way. And of course, you, you do have to have that, that balance of, of, of everything in, in the competition. And that's what, that's what Melfest always offers every year. And I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to do very well with or without my support. <laughs> He'll definitely be challenging the favourites. Yeah, I think he has his groups where he gets his votes and um, I'm excited to see who he will appeal to. And yeah, we have another newcomer coming up next. Yeah, um, it's actually two newcomers. If I'm correct, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently I'm not. Um, it's... The song is called 90 Tollets. Oh my God, I'm so bad with pronunciation, so sorry. It's Wall featuring Sammy. Um, it is written by Sammy Rekic, Christopher Wahlberg, Josephine Glenmark, Jesper Wallander, Andreas Lawson. Um, they're saying it's a colorful number with plenty of energy and something to dance to. Um, I'm just looking at this and I've looked at the kind of like content they've done before why is this giving me jason moran's vibes but like <laughs> it's gonna be something like you know someone with like acoustic fresh bop but that's my personal opinion on it let's start with you lisa what do you think oh i i, I i'm familiar uh, well i'm familiar more with, with with sammy and um his medina past i know we're, we're getting some like hip-hop rap He's, he's bringing that with this feature and he's done work as part of Medina. He's done work with Arash before. So expect something with a bit of probably Middle Eastern flair as, as well in this. And 
we always need those that sort of give something new to the to the competition each time and i feel like it's just going to be a fun sort of throwback hip hop bop yeah i'm looking forward to this one exactly um how about you dominic um, when I first saw the song title, I was like, what does it mean? But then I looked it up and it's actually the 90s. And so I mm. think maybe the 90s influenced also the kind of song. And um, currently there are like a lot of songs that are like, could also have been like in the 90s, 80s or 70s, but are like in the modern production and very popular. And both have been very popular. And um, just like Lisa said, Medina. Um, I checked the charts in Sweden sometimes and they were always like up somewhere. I um, saw them several times and hip hop is not really my thing. I think rock would be more my thing than hip hop, but I, I don't know what to expect here. Um, they're both talented. They're both well known. Well known. Mm -hmm. And um, when they say colorful number with plenty of energy in the 90s, I'm kind of feeling it. If it's catchy, I'm in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How about you, Maria? Well, as far as I get, uh, Sami is uh, yes, a hip-hop singer, and to be honest, I'm not fond of hip-hop, actually. So, I just, I'll just wait for it, and I'm open to anything they have to offer. So, uh, <laughs> well, I just uh, don't know what to expect in general, even after uh, watching some videos. But yeah, I think, I mean, two newcomers, so we'll know that we're either going to be surprised. I don't think we've, I don't think there's any, like, video of them actually performing together. So oh, that's yeah. good, that's probably going to be another thing. It's like, it creates we're gonna no be, impression for me, actually. Yeah, we're so all, we're I all, we're all like, in the same, we're all, we're going to be on the same boat of, like, impressions. Like, mm, who are we going to compare this in the hip hop scene? Okay, and moving on, we've got another newcomer. Yes, also very exciting. And she already performed with Benjamin Ingrosso during her idol time. It's Natalie Pridov, and her song is called Fingerprints. Um, the song is written by Andrea Stone Johansson, Ita Zalmani, um, Laura Barker, and Anna Clara Forlin. And the song is described as an elegant ballad shooting straight for your heart. And I feel it's another cry song. I'm just crying the whole time. <laughs> um, I was watching her um, idol performances, and she has a great voice. She has a great stage personality. I don't know which song, uh, which uh, show it was of Idol, but you can see she's at home on stage, and she knows what she's doing. She's very confident, and if she's entering an elegant ballad, um, I'm sure it's a strong ballad. Also with these songwriters. They know what they do. So, um, yeah, probably another cry song. I'm going to cry and laugh, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Lisa, what do you think? Yeah, um, I I'm looking forward to this because we have multiple British representation here, because not just <laughs> Laurel. No, 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 Natalie herself, she lives in London as is an session singer based in London, which is intriguing. I did a little bit of social media stalking and found that out. <laughs> 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 and um yeah her idle time in 2018 it was all it was power ballads strong vocals throughout and a mix uh, so in some in some instances a, mi a mix of different things so i expect she's gonna just go all out and, and and deliver again and it's always interesting how you clearly see like all, all, all these well-known songwriters they're obviously paying attention and watching all these reality shows to sort of pick up these new artists to, to bring into Melfest and be like, okay, we'll give you something good and see how, and see how you get on. And then that's how they sort of gain their traction for the future. So she could be one to watch. Yes, definitely. Um, Maria, what do you think? Uh, well, I've watched her performances as well, just to get familiar. And I really loved her voice. Such a strong one. Uh, and um, I think, yes, it's going to be something really powerful, touching, and uh, something that could make us cry. But I don't mind at all with such voice, with such uh, personality. So I'm kind of excited for this. 
and uh, yes, let's just wait for it. <laughs> I kind of feel like I have to make like a list of how many times I cried during Melfast next year. It's gonna be a long. I'd like list. to see that list, take a, please. Take a shot yeah. every time you cry. <laughs> yeah, it's like a selfie. Take a, <laughs> take a tally, take a tally, take a tally, take a tally. All the tissues lying around. <laughs> because I cried, obviously. <laughs> Um, Tim, what do you think? I'm just feel. I'm just. I. I mean, yay, newcomer. But why have I got a feeling that like there is like a formula to this? Um, not criticizing. Um, I just think like you get idol ex idol participants, aka Lisa Ajax, Hannah Firm, go to contest and they get the either the boppy songs or ballad like the ballad songs i mean i'm just gonna say that svt knows the trick and it looks like it's working for them so all i'm saying is why fix something that's not broken because the formula is working well so for this one She's got impressive vocal range, so I think whatever song she's been given, it's gonna she's gonna pull it off. You know, I mean, um, I mean, like, um, she's been an idol. So what if you're if you're an idol and then you're going to Mello, you've already built up your fan base. You're just continuing it off to another competition. I mean, they always do pretty awesome when they come from idol to Melfis, get good results. I always kind of say that it's working so good in Sweden, but in Germany, um, Idol's another broadcaster than the one who's doing the Eurovision stuff. So they never kind of invite them. We had one in 2005, Gracia, who finished last. Yeah, but, but isn't, we... isn't that the same case in Sweden anyways? Because I thought TV4 was airing Idol and SVT obviously airs Melo. I think they don't mind that it's not the broadcaster and they just invite them because they're amazing artists. And we just like, no, it's not the broadcaster. We just don't want them. <laughs> broadcasters please keep an eye on this this is how yes. you do your eurovision you don't criticize you don't you don't have network bias thank you very much the talents are right there <laughs> and we have another talent coming up or uh, coming back well yeah uh the final act that was revealed today um he last competed correct me if i'm wrong 2014 yeah. and you know, he's been, he hasn't released any music for a while, but yeah, um, he's coming back with his song New Religion, and it is Anton Evog. Um, the song is written by Jonas Wallen, Joe Killington, Anton himself, and Maya Strumstedt. Um, they're saying it's, it's going to be uh, a quite a melodic chorus and a lot of energy, speed, and dancing. So, and uh, let me guess, it's going to be a sequel to Begging. Hope so. Or like it's natural. Major. I mean, I know natural didn't do very well, but like, um, you know, like Beggy, it had a really good hook with the chorus. I'm guessing he's going to try and emulate that, but obviously in a 2020 version, because like, I mean, what was the hook? Like, oh, 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 uh, da, 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 da. So it's like, it's, it's, I'm guessing it's, he's going to try and put an earworm on there probably. Lisa. What are your thoughts? Despite my usual intolerance to men, I'm actually incredibly excited about Anton being back. It's been a long time. Begging, begging was probably up there as, as one of my favorites as, uh, of 2013. I'd have been quite happy if that had been Sweden's entry, entry that year. He has good stagecraft. He's a choreographer himself. He does his own en he's done his own entries, and he did um, Danny's amazing in 2012. So he's gonna he's gonna bring the sh he's gonna be the, the full on showman this time. And he's been away for a while doing other projects in America, and now he's back and 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 ready to take to the stage again. So he's here with some determination to to, to do well, I think, and. I'm, I'm hoping that his new religion is is a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic, I know you're very excited about this. Yes, well, I love begging. That was amazing. I still listen to it like almost every week or like, every month, but on a regular basis. Um, Natural was also very good. I felt like begging was like more his style and more what he's like 
want to present on the stage. I don't know. Um, I feel a new religion is probably also a huge song because, um, as mentioned earlier, he was um, in the U.S. for a while. I don't think he released any music in like five years or so for a while. And just when just thinking about it, he was probably like writing songs somewhere or got songs sent to him. And then he was like, oh, this song is amazing. I'm going to present it to a huge audience in Memphis. I'm going to do my return. And I think the return is coming from his side because when you're like out of the picture for like quite a while, maybe SPG is not really approaching you. I don't know. But um, I'm happy he's back. And I'm excited to hear that. He can dance. He can build a performance. And he has a stage presence. And yeah, I think he has everything that he needs to get mm -hmm. a great score at the end. Yeah, I also think with him, he's already proven that, you know, high energy song, he can sing it regardless of how hard the choreography is. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, lastly, coming to you, Maria. What are your impressions okay, uh, on Anton? I uh, watched the video of be uh, Begging and uh, actually it's good, but it's not a real banger for me, I'm sorry. Probably it needs, I need some more time to appreciate it even more, but uh, I, I can't say that I'm just completely excited after this to, for, for his comeback. Uh, so I, let me just keep neutral about this and uh, wait for his next step. Oh, well, we'll see how Antol fares this time around after six years, six, seven years. Okay, How then, much um, probably grew as an artist, right? Like in yeah. such a long time. I'm excited to see that. I mean, like from what I've seen, he's you know he's just work. He's just he's just been working hard behind the scenes. So, and he's got one of the songwriters that's known for doing work with Avicii, and he uh, also did "As I Lay Me Down" with Victoria. And oh, I love that song. And has done some wild songs with Aaron, Aaron Chopper. So. I'm expecting good things from Anton just from mm. having that songwriter with a pedigree of up-tempo work. Can we have the song line right now, please? I want to listen to it. <laughs> well, we got two and a bit months to go. So, ouch. I'm sorry. First I'm crying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. But um, anyways, guys, that's the next nine revealed. Um, we'll be back tomorrow when the final 10 contenders are also being revealed. And we already uh, know one of them. Yes, so nine left to go. If, 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 you, if you don't know who that one is, then you clearly haven't been keeping up with the news. So um, head on over to our site or bookmark it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. But for now, thank you very much for watching with me, Dominic, Marie, and Lisa. Uh, if you like what you saw, then give us a like. Uh, press the subscribe button push the notification bell to be one of the first people to find out when we got a new video. Also, don't forget to follow us at ESC Extra on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But for now, kick the bell and tax Mika. See you tomorrow. <laughs>